Dear friends, thanks for coming to our tutorial, effective and efficient, towards open world instance re-identification. Next, I will share a specific image retrieval task. Well, we set certain persons as the retrieval targets. My name is Zheng Wang, a JSPS Fellowship Researcher, working at National Institute of Informatics, Japan. It's my pleasure to share this tutorial with you. My topic is New Trends of Person Reidentification System. My presentation includes three parts. The first part is General Person Reidentification. I will introduce what is the research topic, Person Reidentification, and its applications. We can also name this kind of Person Reidentification as General Person Reid. The second part is Person Reidentification New Trends. This is the main part of my presentation. It includes three kinds of trends. In the third part, I will conclude by a discussion of some future research directions. Nowadays, millions of surveillance cameras are installed in the city and produce a large number of videos every day. It is of great difficulties for investigators to search for the criminal suspect. Here is an example. In the case in Nanjing, China, 1,500 police were asked to watch the videos and find clues. They crossed one more time and finally find 329 shots related to the suspect. It is very time consuming. Person reidentification is a kind of multimedia technology to handle the person retrieval problem and to enhance the retrieval efficiency. It uses the person's appearance to match individuals across a group of long overlapping cameras. It is also a valuable topic that can be used in other real applications. For example, if we can find the same person in the surveillance camera network, we are able to investigate and track a criminal suspect or record the location of a COVID-19 infected person. We can also find the person of interest from a large number of TV series so that we can quickly watch the video we like. In the shopping mall, different persons where Google Classes are able to cooperate with each other to find the person of great interest. When a robot guides the road for us, the robot can focus us again even though we move to the other place, places for well. General person re-ID just counts the challenges of appearance changes of each individual without clothes changing. Here I show some examples. The person's appearance may change because of the occlusion, the innovation change, and the pose or viewpoint variation. To address the problem, existing method use this diagram of person re-ID. For the probe and gallery images, we first extract features by person representation mode, then features are compiled by similarity measurement mode. After we obtain the ranking list, we can also use re-ranking method to optimize the list. In recent years, we have made significant advances in general reality. The performance is very high on some public datasets. For example, 96.1% rank 1 accuracy on the market dataset. It even outperformed the human performance on finding the target image in the gallery. It means that the general reality has been well addressed. However, the general reality assumes an ideal scenario. Well, all person images are captured in daytime with the visible spectrum and have sufficient details to present a person. In real world applications, however, it is impractical to assume the data is always in such a desired scenario. Let's focus on more practical situations and some new trends. Here, in this tutorial, we focus on three kinds of trends, cross-modality, long-term, and group. Cross-modality is our main part to find the criminal. For instance, the system have to check person images in low resolution or captured by infrared cameras 
when the animation condition is not so sufficient. Moreover, witness descriptions and sketches drawn by artists should also be used as the tools. To improve the practical ability of the reality system, we should make more efforts to bridge the gap between different camera settings, such as low and high resolution images, and different devices, such as infrared and visible light images, and the reproduction of human memory and the detected recording by a camera, such as sketch and test description and digital images. To our knowledge, there are few surveys in person reality fields. Paper 10 explored the reality applications built on the game sequence, which is a special and different focus. Paper 11 focused on the general reality and made a multi dimensional overview. Paper 12 provided a systematic evaluation with different features and metrics. Paper 13 started to look into some intermodality challenges but provided a limited summary of current efforts. And our tutorial tries to provide a summary of current research from different suspects. We first make a comparison between single modality reality and cross modality reality as the table shows. For the media type, general reality only uses desired RGB images, while cross modality reality takes additional low resolution infrared sketch images or text text description into account for the participant general ready only employs the resources from machine intelligence while cross modality ready also brings in the input of from human intelligence such as the sketch images drawn by the painters or the text descriptions by the witness for the main challenger General reality only needs to deal with intramodality discrepancy, while cross-modality reality should also bridge the gap from both intro and intermodality discrepancies. There is a, also a performance gap between general reality and cross-modality reality. Reality system always consists of a feature extraction part and a descriptor matching part. For general reality, both probe and gallery samples are from the design modality. Well, for the cross modality reality, the probe sample or gallery samples are from another modality, as intro and inter modality discrepancies are essentially different. The method designed for general reality cannot be directly used in cross modality reality. We summarize available datasets for cross modality reality in the table, including the application scenario, the number of cameras, identities, and samples. To make a comparison, we also list the two typical general reality datasets. The cross modality datasets are categorized into four types. We have the following summaries. Although many low-resolution datasets were constructed, most of them are simulated. Only two Infrared datasets were constructed. SYSMM is an active infrared dataset, while RegDB is a passive one. Only one sketch photo dataset and one test image dataset were constructed. Compared with general reality, there is still a lot of room to construct more available datasets. For, for low resolution, it requires to construct it practical dataset instead of the simulated ones. For the other three kinds of application scenario, datasets on the different conditions, styles, or with large scales should be constructed. At first, we focus on the low resolution to high resolution discrepancy. The low resolution image has limited information to represent a person. The person's appearance degrees in the less detailed modality. The first work I want to introduce is multi scale learning for low resolution person reality in ICCB 2015. This is the first work focusing on the low resolution to high resolution reality. The method focuses on match learning to match images with different, low, uh, different resolutions. 
For the image, the method first obtains two images. One is high resolution and the other is low resolution. Then the method proposes two projections, one for high resolution and the other for low resolution. It assumes that the structure of data distribution of a person's appearance across high resolution and low resolution are similar in the feature space. So after projecting the image features of different scales into a common space, the method satisfies this cross-resolution alignment. Here, they propose a heterogeneous class mean discrepancy as the objective. WH and WS are two projections. The experiments show that existing metric learning modes have a clear performance job, but the proposed multi-scale metric works. The second work I want to introduce is our work on EJK 2016. We proposed a new representation between different resolutions. We investigated the distance variation behavior by changing the image resolutions. We observed that the scale distance functions generated by image pairs from the same person or different persons can be classified as the red and the blue regions indicate. The scale distance functions are further represented by parameter vectors in the scale distance function space. We map a function onto the function space and classify it as either the feasible or infeasible functions by the random forest. Experiments show that we can use this kind of representation to represent an image pair. The third work I want to introduce is deep low resolution person reidentification on AAAI 2018. The method is very straightforward. It consists of a super resolution network and the ready network. The low resolution image and the down sampled low resolution images are enlarged by a super resolution network. And then two kinds of output, super resoluted images and original high resolution images are input into the ready network. The network is in the end-to-end -end way, and the joint loss function is used to optimize the CN architecture. The key strategy of the method is unifying the modality to high resolution and the match images in high, re high resolution space. The fourth work I want to introduce is our work on EJK 2018. This work also explores a modality unification strategy. We cascaded multiple SR GANs in series so that the network is capable of enlarged images with different scales. To supplement the ability of image feature representation, we plug in a reidentification re network. An end to end framework improves the integration between scale adaptive super resolution and reidentification and consequently enhance the similarity of high resolution and low resolution pair during super resolution process. In addition, a common lo human loss is, is designed to make super resolution images look more like human. Here we show some generated images. The fifth work I want to introduce is Recover and Identify, a generative dual model for cross-resolution person reidentification in ICCV 2019. The method introduced an adversarial way to enhance the generation. Overall, the network consists of a cross-resolution GAN and a cross-modal reID network. Cross-resolution GAN lends resolution invariant representations and recovers the missing details in low-resolution input images. Cross-modal ReID network consists, considers both feature modalities for cross-resolution person ReID. Note that the network includes two discriminators. The feature discriminator DF takes the feature F, FH 
and FL as the input to determine whether they are from high resolution or, or low resolution images XH or XL. The image discriminator DI takes the recovered high resolution images and the original high resolution ground truth images as input to distinguish whether the input images are real or fake. The sixth work I want to introduce is Intertask Association for Cross-Resolution Person Reidentification in CUPR 2020. The method above combines super-resolution mode and the re-ID mode together. But in this paper, the authors consider that super-resolution mode and the re-ID mode in a tasked manner is unsatisfactory. Suppose the main task is re-ID re for high-resolution and generated super-resolution image. The auxiliary task is super-resolution. The method proposes an inter-task association module between the identity representation FC and the discriminator representation FD. In this way, the method recovers the resolution of low-resolution query images so that the high resolution a uh, super-resoluted image can be well matched to high-resolution uh, gallery images for person ready. We will combine this low-resolution to high-resolution related methods later in the discussion part. Next, let's focus on the infrared to RGB discrepancy. The modality gap is more changing since the discrepancy between Low resolution and high resolution is only on RGB channels. Well, the discrepancy between infrared IR and RGB are in different channels. The first work I want to introduce is RGB infrared cross modality person ID in ICCB 2017. This is the first work focusing on the IR to RGB ID. The authors analyze three different network structures. They are one stream, two stream, and as in metric FC layer. It is found that one stream network can then and involve the domain specific structure if there exists domain specific and shared nodes. Based on one stream network, the authors also proposed a deep zero padding to help one stream network more likely to involve domain specific nodes automatically, so as to make the network structure more suitable for the task. The second work I want to introduce is our work in EJCAT 2018. We present an end to end dual path learning framework and a novel bi directional dual constraint top ranking loss to simultaneously consider the cross-modality and intramodality variations. Note that the weights of embedding FC layer are shared for multi-modality shareable feature learning. The ranking loss consists of two parts, cross-modality constraint top ranking loss and intramodality constraint loss. The experiment showed that our end-to-end -end framework works better than two-state framework. The third work I want to introduce is cross-modality person re-identification with generative adversarial training in EJCAT 2018. The proposed framework consists of two components. The first component is a deep CNN generator with identity loss and cross-modality triplet loss to generate modality invariant features for RGB and IR images in common space. The second component is a modality classifier as discriminator that discriminates between different modalities. The generator and the discriminator beat each other to learn this discriminative common representation for person reality. The fourth work I want to introduce is our work in CUPR 2019. We try to unify the modality. The framework consists of two parts. The image level discrepancy reduction subnetwork TI first projects input from the image space visible or infrared 
modality to the unified space. Well, the modality discrepancy is reduced. After translation, we can obtain full channel images. Then the feature level description reduction subnetwork TF is utilized to eliminate the remaining appearance discrepancy. The two subnetworks are cascaded and jointly optimized in an end-to-end -end manner. The fifth work I want to introduce is infrared visible cross-modal person re-identification with an X modality in AAAI 2020. The modality proposed an auxiliary X modality. A lightweight generator outputs the X modality images. Then the Three modalities are fed into the weight sharing cross model feature learner. Two constraints are designed to constrain the feature representation. They are the cross modality gap CMG and the, and the modality respective gap constraint MRG. Note that the MRG is indeed the intra modality discrepancy. The sixth work I want to introduce is HICMD, Hierarchical Cross-Modality Dis Disentanglement for Visible Infrared Person Reactivation in CVPR 2020. The entire framework includes two important components, the Hierarchical Feature Learning Module Extract Identity and Attribute Features. The ID Preserving Person Image Generation Network, IDPIG, is to Disentangle ID discriminative factors and ID excluded factors from cross modality images. The ID discriminative factors include body shape and clothes pattern, and the ID excluded factors include pose and illumination from RGB IR images. The network is in the attribute exchanging strategy so that the ID excluded factors are distangled. Next, let's focus on the text to image discrepancy. In this task, we use text or natural language to find some certain persons. Person search with natural language description in CVPR 2017 is the first work to study the problem of searching persons with natural language. To address the problem, the method consists of a visual subnetwork as the right blue branch and the language subnetwork as the left branch. The visual subnetwork generates a series of visual units and each unit encodes if certain appearance patterns exist in the person image. Given each input word, the language subnetwork outputs the word level gates and the unit level attention for waiting visual units. Uh, units. Then the visual units and the words are matched with weight. The second work I want to introduce is deep cross-modal projection learning for image text matching in ECCV 2018. The method proposed two losses to learn a joint feature embedding. First, a cross-modal projection matching loss it attempts to minimize the KL divergency between the projection competitive distribution and the normalized matching distribution. Second, a cross-modal projection classification loss, CMPC. It attempts to classify the vector projection of features from one modality onto the matched features from another modality. As for the cross-modality re-ID, let's finally focus on the sketch to photo discrepancy. This is only one representative work in this direction, cross-domain adversarial feature learning for sketch re-ID in AC Multimedia 2018. The network has two feature rep generators for sketches and photos rep respectively, then two features are fed into a domain discriminator. The losses output by 
the domain discriminator are two object objectives. Meanwhile, two intramodality classifiers are trained for person label classification and the pairwise verification network is to introduce to judge whether they are the same person or not. Considering few works in this direction, we would like to contribute a new dataset. Existing datasets such as PKU Sketch have several limitations such as small scale, one sketch per identity, uniform and a strict style. Towards a real application, our idea of the proposed dataset is featured in three aspects. One is large scale, two is multi-style. Sketches are drawn by multiple artists with different painting style and observations. Three is semi-professionals. Our dataset collects sketches from semi-professionals who know how to draw, but not trained for forensic so that the applications are less restricted. We hope to release the dataset soon and benefit the community. Here, we would like to have a small discussion for the cross-modality re-ID. Most of the methods selected a deep learning framework. It is probably because all the heterogeneous application scenarios are raised in recent years, and deep learning methods are in their high-speed developing period. In general, deep learning methods are good at learning shared feature and classification. When a significant amount of training samples are available, and we can also find that different methods have different focus to fill the gaps between the desired modality and other cross modalities. Some methods try to learn a metric, others attempt to learn shared features, and there are also some methods try to unify the modality on the data level. In the slide above, I have made a mark to indicate their focus. As can be seen, the existing researchers in each application scenario still have limitations. For the low-resolution low application scenario, recent works have mainly evaluated on the simulated dataset. For the sketch application scenario, only one method touched this direction due to the hardness of building a benchmark. So we are trying to uh, connect it a new dataset for this work this direction. As described above, in our opinion, representative method can be categorized into three kinds of learning pipeline. The features show the diagram of each learning pipeline. Pipeline A employs the metric learning method to learn how to match the features from separate representation learning modes, and the representation learning modes are trained separately with single modality data samples. Pipeline B focuses on learning shared feature modes of different modalities, and the training data come from those modalities. Pipeline C pays attention to generate the unified modality samples for example, using super-resolution method to generate high-resolution images from low-resolution low resolution images, or using some images generation method to generate infrared images from RGB images, also generates RGB images from infrared images. This table compares representative method we introduced above. We can use this table to make some useful tips. We can see that for each kind of application scenario from top to bottom, the method becomes more effective. Generally, the pipeline MU modality unification performs better than pipeline RL representative learning and better than pipeline ML metric learning. Hence, unifying the modalities of samples is an in inactive way to fill the modality gap. Since we have two modalities, the adversarial learning is also an effective way to make the network adapt to the different modalities. 
In addition, person reality is a kind of fine grain retrieval task. So it is suggested that we should pay attention to the details of the person. And uh, we also think that intramodality gap and the intermodality gap are usually reduced by two different networks. It is better to make a connection to let them benefit each other. Next, let's look at the trend of long term. General reality approaches assume that person images are captured under relatively similar animation condition. In real applications, long-term person retrieval is common, and person images are often captured under different animation conditions at different times across a day. In this situation, the performance of general reality modes often degrades dramatically. We raise this new and practical task in Innovation at Adaptive Person Reidentification on the Journal of IEEE Transactions on Multimedia. The red feature provides innovation analysis of related datasets. The top two rows, the two, top two features show the innovation distribution of market and Duke datasets. We can find that the images were captured around one and two hours, respectively, and the animation do not change too much from the mean value 100. The bottom pictures show the variance of in image animation on related datasets. We can find that the animation variance of the simulated datasets and the real datasets with different inflation are much larger than that of existing market and Duke dataset. We proposed a novel animation identity disentanglement network, which disappears the animation information away from a person's appearance. The method achieves great performance improvement on our two datasets. We also evaluate our method on some real images, and it is capable of uh, elevating the effect of innovation discrepancy. The disentanglement network is based on a very simple backbone. The network is easy to follow. Extensive experiments prove that the network is robust in long-term person identification application. The left of tables show the effectiveness of our method and each module of the network. To see its effectiveness on different conditions, we also synthesize images with different global innovation change, local innovation change, and also construct a real dataset. The results show that innovation can be dispelled in some distance and the performance can be improved. The long term can also lead to a more challenging situation that is close changing. In this year, two papers started to focus on this direction. The T Palming 2020 raised a PRCC dataset, which consists of 33,000 images from more than 200 identities. And the ECCV 2020 paper constructed a LTCC dataset, which uh, consists of a closed change set, and it contains 91 persons with different clothes. The long term trend causes the elimination and the closed change. Not so many works investigate this direction. We, can, we consider that future works may consider how to recognize person while ignoring the person's appearance and taking into account more useful information such as time and space. The cross-modality and the long-term trend are about the single person. And next, let's focus on the trend of group reality.
The paper group re-identification leveraging and integrating multi-grain formation in AC Multimedia 2018 start to focus on this task. They compute multi-grain representation to categorize the appearance and spa spatial features of multi-grain objects and evaluate the importance weight of each object for group ready so as to handle the inference from the group dynamics. We also have a paper in AC Multimedia 2019. We consider that group ready is very challenging since we face the problems not only from the appearance changes of individuals, but also from the group layout and the membership changes. Meanwhile, we find that the training data is not so sufficient to address these challenges, we introduce nodes to simulate the appearance changes of individuals and a graph to simulate the group membership changing. The left picture is the architecture of our method. In the training step, we first transfer the style of source domain dataset to that of target one. We then construct a graph sample pool based on the transfer the individual, individual samples. After that, we train the GNN on the constructed graph samples. In the testing step, the GNN model first extracts features from the probe and the gallery images, and then calculates the distance between the probe feature and the gallery features, and finally determines the group ID according to the distance. The right picture indicates the idea of graph samples construction. The graph samples are constructed based on the domain transfer nodes. The whole process includes three, two, includes two grouping strategies. The second row indicates the membership preserving grouping strategy. Well, the group membership does not change. The third row indicates the membership wearing grouping strategy where the membership changes. We demonstrate the effectiveness of our methods on the public group ready datasets like Duke Group and Road Group. Our method gets the state-of-the-art results. Meanwhile, the ablation study indicates that each grouping strategy is very useful. Finally, let's move to the conclusion and discussion part. Here are some future directions that we think the researchers can investigate. First, data construction. For low-resolution application scenario, the researchers can only get a simulated dataset. For the other types of applications, although the researchers can achieve practical datasets, the choice is limited. In addition, large-scale datasets are also required. It is somehow urgent for us to build new datasets and push forward this new trend. On the other hand, generating more realistic datasets like Paper 5 is also a good way to make one step a word. Second, taking advantages of general reality datasets and methods. There are sufficient datasets and methods in general reality. It is easy to address the intramodality discrepancies in the design modality. Obviously, the feature space of design modality can be well constructed since the heterogeneous modality samples are not enough. It is hard to build a perfect heterogeneous feature space for the cross modality. However, it is reasonable to project the cross modality samples into the design modality, like 35, paper 35 does. Third, human interactions and crowdsourcing. For sketch and a text application scenario, human intelligence join into the process of reality. Human intelligence is somehow sub subjective and incomplete, so we should consider how to mine and investigate useful information to help search the target in the surveillance system. On the other hand, a lot of witnesses will provide their clues. 
Each person may have the different views so that the crowdsourcing crews may also diverse with each other. We should design a strategy to remove the conflict and filter the variable information. Fourth, investigation on modality unification. For low-resolution application scenario, some methods attempt to use super-resolution technology to unify the modality. For infrared application scenario, with the help of cycle gain, one works not only transfer the image from the infrared modality to the RGB modality, but also transfer the image from the RGB modality to the infrared modality. However, for the text and sketch application scenarios, no work has investigated to unify the modality. On the other hand, we can also investigate unified modality to a latent one. For example, a middle-level resolution for low-resolution application scenario, and a hyperspectral image for the infrared application scenario. Fifth, integrating multiple cross-modality application scenario. For a practical system, it may require different kinds of input to search out the target. The cross-modality application scenarios can be equipped in different stages. If we can integrate different kinds of inputs, more variable information will be used for retrieval, since different inputs have different attentions and views for the target. It also will raise a multiple cross-modality retrieval task. Six, considering the privacy issue, it is fine to conduct academic research on public datasets, but with the leak of personal image data, privacy concerns are raising nowadays when algorithms need to be applied to practical applications. Recently, some works have explored to hide privacy information present in the image. But for the new trends, the tasks contain multiple modality data, data with large appearance changes, and multiple persons. New privacy protection strategies need to be investigated. Seventh, design a common model that works not only on general reality tasks, but also on cross-modality reality and close changing reality in new trends. As we know, the reality modes always work in a special condition. A mode works in close invariant condition may not work well in close changing condition. It is necessary to propose a common mode that is effective under different conditions. Finally, I would like to thank all my collaborators and students. Thanks for your patience.